All right, guys, welcome to another speed test. And this one is going to be a little unfair, but even more exciting than the previous ones that we've done, because we have two devices from a different timeline with different technology. And we are going to put the same ROM. We already have the same ROM on both the devices. And you're going to do a speed test. Now, the results as expected might be better on the Mi 11X, but does the K20 Pro have a trick up its sleeve which can make it compete with a two-year newer device? And that is what we are going to check in today's video. So before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think you like chatting with like-minded people, join us on Telegram. We have more than 1800 members there. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. So let's see, let me wrap my head around this. Now, I'll tell you the background story on this, what exactly happened. I did a speed test of the K20 Pro with the Poco X3 Pro on a similar ROM, that is ancient OS 6.1 versus 6.2, because this is a 855 and the X3 Pro is a 860. So it's fine, you know, these are not two very, very different processors. In fact, uh, the 860 is an overclocked version of this processor. But then what happened is when I put the Poco X3 Pro against this device on the same ROM, 860 versus 870, in normal usage, the Poco X3 Pro held up against this guy. So then I thought that, you know, it would be interesting to see what a 855 can do against the 870, barring the benchmarks. Of course, the benchmark numbers will be way higher because of more powerful technology and processor. So let's get going with the speed test here. Now, the only change that I need to make to keep the test fair is I need to go to display over here and I need to set the refresh rate to 60 Hertz. Otherwise, it will be an unfair advantage, right? Now, we are at 60 Hertz on both the devices. And uh, as you can see, similar experience, right? So we are good to go. No apps in memory, similar amount of battery on both the devices and connected to the same Wi-Fi network. So let's go ahead and start with BGMI. So three, two, one, go. Let's see here. I'm kind of nervous. It really, really is fun to see that these basic, oh, wow, K20 Pro is actually launching it faster. Is that, no. See, the 870 took over, which is a good thing. The K20 Pro is still thinking, that's fine. This is a two-year-old device still holding on to itself. Three, two, one, go for Call of Duty Mobile. Let's do it. Okay, let's see here. Which one will it be? Um, okay. It's the K20 Pro. It launched Call of Duty Mobile a little faster, but that's just one application. Genshin Impact. Three, two, one, go. Similar timings on both of them. What's also going to be interesting is the memory management on both the devices. Okay, similar timings there for a heavy game like Genshin Impact. K20 Pro is not a bad device after all, is it? It's a very good device. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Exact timings. Really, really interesting stuff here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. This guy did it first. <laughs> so this is the second app in which K20 Pro is beating the Mi 11X. And to do benchmark. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Wow, similar timing there. Geekbench, three, two, one, go. Similar timings again. CPU throttle test, three, two, one, go. Similar timings again. Accu battery, three, two, one, go. And Telegram, three, two, one, go. Similar timing again. Gmail, three, two, one, go. Similar timings, Twitter, three, two, one, go. Wow, exactly the same timing. Instagram and the phone application. Okay, messaging. Google Chrome. Wow, and calculator. Okay, 
So I'll tell you, the K20 Pro held its own. Now, the reason why this is very interesting is because understand how a two-year-old processor and a two-year-old phone can still keep up with a Snapdragon 870 when you give it equivalent level of software. This might not be the exact same software, of course, but more or less, you know, these are debloated custom ROMs that we are talking about and the results are really, really interesting. Now, one more interesting aspect that we have is the memory management. So let's see here how smooth the scrolling in both the devices is. Not much different, is it? So let's go to BGMI. <laughs> okay, it's funny. It's really funny because the K20 Pro held this in memory and the Mi 11X didn't. Both have 6GB RAM, by the way. Call of Duty Mobile. Okay, both of them are reloading. No point here. And Genshin Impact. Both of them have it in memory. Among Us. Oh, okay. This time, uh, the Mi 11X has it in memory. It's a good thing there. And to do. Geekbench. In memory on both. CPU throttle test. In memory. Accu battery in memory, Telegram in memory, Gmail, what happened there? Gmail in memory, Twitter in memory, Instagram, same scenes, the phone application, messaging, Google Chrome and calculator. So nothing to separate these two even in the memory management, one app here and there. Both of them are doing an excellent job in keeping apps in memory and stuff. So who do we call a winner? Well, of course, for obvious reasons, if you're going to compare between the 855 and 870, the 870 is going to be the winner. But, but there is a big but here before we look at the benchmark numbers. If you're holding on to the K20 Pro, it has an AMOLED display. This has a better AMOLED display. This has a decent camera. This has a better camera. So, you know, it's not that you should not upgrade from the K20 Pro to the Mi 11X, but understand if you're a custom ROM user and all you do is use a bunch of applications and don't play a lot of games and your battery backup is fine, probably your K20 Pro will last you a little longer because this device still have a lot of life left in it. It is still kicking. And let's talk about the benchmark numbers with that. Now, of course, over here, 568, 806, 661, 1. 661 457 so almost 100,000 points of difference and if we talk about the Geekbench numbers over here they will be almost 1.5 times higher as well because uh, 762 870 2737 3129 so pretty good difference there and uh, even in the CPU throttle test now CPU throttle test is something interesting it doesn't really talk about the horsepower it talks about the consistency of performance and that's what we're going to look at now 8%. So that is better on the K20 Pro. 202, 851, 179, 208 GIPS. So as you can see, this guy throttled, but this doesn't. So, you know, the stability is more on this one, but the, the minimum performance on this was 176 and the, you know, average was 179. So, you know, all in all, this is a pretty fun test. K20 Pro holding its own against the mighty Snapdragon 870 powered Mi 11X. And it really goes to show that what a well-optimized ROM with a good kernel like Soviet Star can do to you in terms of performance and smoothness as far as the UI is concerned. Even if you talk about the Google feed at 60 hertz, you know, you won't really see that there is a lot of difference. These are similarly performing devices. So, yes, K20 Pro devs, brilliant job. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this particular speed test and put in a request in the comment section what device, what ROM versus what device, what ROM you want to see. Once I'm back from my trip on Monday, I will start making videos on those. Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.